the media was because one art form wasn't enough. Now, last Media Ween, I talked about the recently released Adams Family movie for a vlog video, and while I was probably a little generous towards it, it's certainly better than what we're looking at today. Adams Family Reunion. Yeah, even if you weren't a fan of the animated 2019 movie, we're gonna be wishing that's what we were watching instead of this. What can really be said about the Addams Family franchise at this point? It started off as a one-panel comic series in the late 30s, got turned into a live-action show in the 60s with a surprisingly short two-season run, several cartoons, video games, television specials, comics, and, of course, theatrical films from the 90s. Easily Barry Sonnenfeld's best films. The first two movies had a wonderful combination of dark humor and sentimentality that both older and younger audiences could enjoy. With its wonderful casts, amazing production, and great scripts, these are definitely Halloween classics in the making. But did you know they actually wanted to make a third theatrical Adams Family movie? The plans were to do a third movie called Adams Family Tree, which would delve more into the family's history. But because of Raoul Julian's unfortunate passing, they didn't go forward with the project out of respect for the man. Eventually, a script was picked up by Saban Entertainment, meaning the people who made this also are the people that gave us this. They decided to make a third Addams Family movie to bridge the first two in a TV series they were working on at the time called New Addams Family. Because that worked so well with the Munsters. That kid, New Addams Family, actually wasn't all that bad. But it does make things more confusing since the only returning actors from the original movies are Lurch and Thing, and the only actor who returned from this movie and the show was Wednesday. Apparently this movie sucked so hard they didn't even give it any DVD, Blu-ray, or digital release. No, just stuck to VHS. That's always a good sign. Let's just get this over with. This is Adam's Family Reunion. The movie begins with a mailman trying to deliver the Adams' mail while he's soon attacked by a horrible CGI mailbox. Okay, between that and the bad matte painting, we're not on the right track so far. Wednesday and Pugsley begin to attack the mailman as it's soon broken up by their father, Gomez, played by, oh, hi, Tim Curry. Wednesday, Pugsley. How many times have I asked you not to play with the mailman while he's working? First that Scooby-Doo GameCube game, and now this. Eh, it's at least good to see Tim Curry getting work. Children, no matter how often you scream at them or how severely you punish them, they always beg for more. We then see the rest of the recast family, including Morticia, this time played by Daryl Hannah. <laughs> oh, hey, thing! You're just in time to see my latest creation! Why does Uncle Fester sound less like Christopher Lloyd and sound more like Mega Man from Captain N the Game Master? If you didn't trust you, I trust you! As for what Fester is working on, he's working on a dog to give to Pugsley. Oh my god, that looks even worse than the giant scrappy monster from the first Scooby-Doo movie. And has a strict diet of... of... hair. What? We are a very special and distinguished people. People with an identity. People with vision and purpose. Yes. People with a superior fashion sense. People with hopes and dreams. And what is it that makes us the truly different people we are? Ancestry! The very thing that separates us from the lower animals. Yeah, uh, despite how wealthy the Adamses are, none of them, let alone Gomez, seem like the kind of person to see themselves as above anybody, so... This just feels weirdly out of character. This family meeting was called because it seems Gomez got his hands on a book that has all the important information about the members of the family. The book even includes a family tree publication that reaches out to long-lost relatives. Don't really see why that's necessary, because I thought their extended family was just a phone call away in the last two movies, but whatever. They write in, and they end up getting a surprise visit from Gomez's grandparents, played by George's mom from Seinfeld, and Kevin McCarthy from Invasion of the Body Snatchers in UHF. Once at dinner, they start displaying actions that are quite odd to the rest of the family, like gardening and watching a baseball game. That's right, they're normal. All this is very worrying to Gomez and Morticia. Did they give you any strange feelings? Any cause for alarm? Darling, keep in mind that to me, they are still in-laws. Tradition clearly dictates that I must despise them. <sighs> oh, I'm so glad they came to stay with us for a while. <laughs> <sighs> Is anyone else skeezed out by the fact that what really turned them on was them talking about his grandmother? 
Fester comes to the conclusion that their grandparents have a case of Waltzheimer's. Ugh. And they also get an invitation to an Adams Family reunion. The family sees this as a good excuse to see if they have a witch doctor in the family who can help cure their grandparents. Again, I thought the Adams extended family was pretty close and they'd know if they had a witch doctor in the family at this point, but whatever, I guess. They spell Adams with only one D. You would think that a company dealing in matters of family heritage would at least spell our name right. Oh, I don't know. A wacky misunderstanding, perhaps? Yep, apparently the Family Tree Publisher system is on the fritz due to the Adams' paperwork, and that invitation that went to the Double D Adams family is actually intended for the members of the Single D Adams family that end up back at their mansion. And this all really amounts to a useless, unfunny subplot where these two yuppies are scared out of their wits by Cousin It and Granny, including one of the most obvious references you can think of involving someone holding an axe. Run, dog! Let's get Yeah, we're just gonna skip that, because it really doesn't affect the main plot, okay? Okay. So they arrive at the Primrose Resort, where we see the Adamses are now walking amongst a bunch of rich yuppies. Well, yeah, because it's not like that's what we did with the camp subplot in the last movie. This is my husband, Dr. Philip Adams. Gomez Adams. What an honor indeed. I understand you're a doctor. Uh, Philip is a leading psychiatrist. A witch doctor. As it seems, this brother and sister team, played by Ed Baisley Jr. and the villainess from that Turbo Power Rangers movie, are helping host the event in a scheme to kill their bitter old father and inherit his fortune. While all that's going on, we see Wednesday and Pugsley interacting with their cousins. And if they weren't done ripping off things from Adam's family values, we get a side story of Pugsley falling in love with this girl, played by a young Haley Duff. Yeah, and he never once questions the fact that he's falling in love with a girl he thinks he's related to. There's no way we're related. Our ancestors date all the way back to the second president of the United States, John Quincy Adams. Well, our ancestors go all the way back to Vlad the Impaler. Okay, ignoring the flawed punchline to that, because, let's face it, Vlad the Impaler obviously doesn't have the last name Adams, and that was just a stretch for a joke. John Quincy Adams was the sixth president. John Adams was the second. <laughs> No Frankenstein reference. People see this undead Frankenstein looking man trying to pull a woman out of the water and they think that he's trying to drown her. Gomez keeps trying to get Ed Baisley Jr. to cure his grandparents, still under the impression that he's a witch doctor, but Baisley won't have it until Gomez beats him in several competitions. First at a game of darts, then later a game of ping pong, and then followed by a game of tennis, in which we see Gomez speak French instead of his native Spanish, smoke a pipe instead of his usual cigar, and the obvious stunt doubles doing backflips. It's like the people who made this movie barely knew anything about the Adams Family characters. I mean, Tim Curry's given it his all, but God, this is embarrassing. That night, these two head off to a formal dinner where we see... Yeah, no, I'm sorry. There's no way that a bunch of rich old people like this would get this kind of music. As we see, these two begin their usual sensual tango together on the dance floor. Only this time, it's nowhere near as impressive, from the bad CG, awful editing, and even the regular dance moves. I mean, yeah, I know the typical joke of white people dancing and all, but even then, this is just odd. Once they're done with that, the single D Adam's father tells all these gold diggers to go to hell, which causes Ed Baisley Jr. to attack Gomez for applauding the old man, and it even results in a knife fight despite the perfectly good swords on the wall. Oh please, give this man a sword! Gomez could wipe the floor with this guy! It's like they went out of their way to not have fun while making this movie. While all this is happening, Fester and Thing end up chasing after that dog, which is chasing after this lady who's running from a sleepwalking lurch. And Wednesday, Pugsley, and Haley Duff are trying to dig up bodies. Soon enough, Gomez and Morticia are arrested, the kids are taken by Child Protective Services, Lurch is buried, don't ask. Fester is taken to the electric chair, and Thing and the dog are picked up by a dog catcher, played by... Ah, what do we have here? I can't believe I'm even saying this, but... Even Clint Howard is above this movie. Yeah, I said it. I'll say it again. Even Clint Howard 
is above this movie. Anyway, the single D Adam's father bails these two out because... For some reason, I guess. I guess he hates his actual family, so he figures the enemies of his enemies are his friends. They end up saving the kids before they could torture the yuppies some more, dig up Lurch, save Thing as the dog attacks Clint Howard, and get Fester out of the nut house while the inmates are ready to kill Ed Baisley Jr. by electric chair. Sure, electric chairs are nothing to them, but they've witnessed someone die in an electric chair in the last movie. They return home and just kind of shrug off curing their grandparents' Alzheimer's, meaning this entire movie was pointless. As we end with the Adamses watching fireworks on Independence Day. Hugsley, my boy. Why the long face? Might this have something to do with a certain young lady named Gina? No, it's just I think I left my Siberian firecracker at those weird people's house. And they died. So, that was Adam's family reunion, and man, this sucked. The characters felt horribly misrepresented, none of the gags worked, the story felt like a rehash of the other two movies, or filled to the brim with continuity errors, the production is bad from the lackluster acting and effects, and either as a sequel to the movies or prequel to the show, it fails on both accounts. It feels like they were trying way too hard to replicate elements from Adam's Family values while missing what made that movie work. And even that revival series that followed, New Adam's Family, even that was better than this. That had more of the spirit of the original show than this tried to. Then again, it's no surprise because Saban Entertainment went out of its way to trim the original script down so it would be more TV appropriate because the dark humor of the first two movies is definitely not what made those charming, right? But they still told the director to try and replicate Barry Sonnenfeld's style. They literally pulled a style over substance with this movie. A few performances like Tim Curry tried to work with what they're given, but all in all, it just falls flat on its face. It really is no surprise why this movie didn't go anywhere beyond its initial VHS release. In fact, the only way to watch this movie now is by watching it through a VHS rip on YouTube. And the companies that made this movie, Saban and Warner Brothers, they didn't even take that upload down. This movie means that little to them. <sighs> Next time, we're going to be talking about two episodes of shows I really like. But until then, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough. Wonderfully scary and pleasantly hairy. Delightfully very. Yes, the Adams family. Welcome to the Adams family. Go into the Adams family. Come into the Adams family. Stop, stop. You look like you've been through hell and back. Go on. You're just saying that. <laughs> oh, what the? Uh...